This is the International AQA Certificate for GCSE and we're looking at plants and more specifically we're looking at plant responses today. In previous videos on photosynthesis and plant growth generally we have understood some of the key elements that plants need to grow effectively. And as a quick reminder we know that they need sunlight uh, for photosynthesis and obviously the air supply containing the carbon dioxide required for photosynthesis. Uh, they need water, obviously, taken up through their roots, and they need a whole range of minerals and nutrients, which are also taken up through their roots. Um, plants can grow depending on these different conditions, um, not only just by changing the rate of their photosynthesis, but they're able to actually respond to all of these characteristics. So as their environment changes, they will also change their behaviour. Um, Plants will know to grow upwards, uh, their roots know to grow down uh, under the ground, and we need to understand well, how do they know to do this. So the key things that they are sensitive to in their environmental uh, conditions, uh, just like in a, um, in a human or in the other animals, there's a stimulus, and that stimulus is the thing in which the organism is responding to. So the plants um, sense it is either light, or it's going to be water, or it's going to be gravity as one of those three stimuli. We're going to have a look to see well, how do they respond to each one of these in turn. So a plant responding to a particular stimulus, and the way in which it does that, is what we refer to as a tropism. So, tropism is the movement of the plant in response to that stimulus, uh, either growing away from it or towards it. So, if the plant is growing towards a stimulus, for example, growing towards light, we describe it as a positive tropism. And if it's growing away from it, it would therefore be called a negative tropism. So, uh, looking at each of the three stimuli that we have already discussed, we can work out what's going to happen to each of them. So, responding to light is called phototropism, so if you're going towards light it will be positive phototropism. Water is hydrotropism, and gravity is geotropism, sometimes known as gravitropism as well, to do with gravity. Okay, so, phototropism, hydro and geotropism. A classic way to investigate phototropism is using a, uh, an experiment like this. And this is the sort of, sort of thing that might be found in a typical exam question. The hormones that are involved in controlling plant growth, uh, particularly for being sensitive and responding to light, are found in the tips of the, the growing shoot. And we're going to prove, using this experiment, that the hormone A comes from the tip and that it is that hormone that is required to respond to, uh, to light, to make it grow towards the light. So here they're using grass seedlings and what we're going to start with a control pot, pot A, where it uh, has nothing done to it. Uh, we're going to have a one where we're going to remove the tips, where we suspect that hormone is coming from. And we're going to have pot C, which we're going to cover the tips up. So we're going to leave them intact, but we're going to cover them up so they don't have any light uh, reaching them. And what usually happens is we put them into a box and leave them to grow. But the reason we put them into a box is to get rid of all the uh, other light, and we can shine the light in from one side to make sure that the light's coming from an, an abnormal direction. Obviously, light normally comes from above, so we're going to shine it from the side uh, to prove that they do actually respond to light. Um, and so, what we can do, we can make our predictions in the usual manner. Now, we could um, expect that a normal control plant should grow towards the light, so we can say that one grows towards the light. Those without any root tips at all are going to be unable to respond to the light, and therefore. Um, probably won't grow at all because there's no growth hormone. 
whereas those that have the growth hormones from the tips, but there's no light available to them to act, is therefore going to hopefully grow straight upwards instead. So we'll see what should happen from there. We can switch the light on, so you can see the light was coming in from the side. Obviously we have to wait a significant amount of time for not only the growth to take place, but for any changes in, in response to the light to occur. And if we take the lid back off the box, we can see that we're absolutely right. That went towards the light. This one didn't grow at all because it had no growth hormone whatsoever. Um, and this one went straight up because although it had growth hormone, it was unable to be affected by the light because of the foil tips over the end. So a classic experiment that you might uh, be given in uh, an exam question and asked to explain the changes that's seen instead. So understanding about these tropisms, we have to understand about the hormones that are involved. And plants, just like animals, have hormones. And these hormones we've referred to in the communication uh, unit as chemical messengers, as opposed to the electrical ones, which are your nerve impulse that travels around your body. So these chemical messengers, these hormones, uh, have a whole range of jobs in a plant. They predominantly look at growth, which we, we've just seen, but also control flowering or even fruit ripening. And these have a specific name. They're called auxins. And these auxins come in a whole range of different types, responsible for each of the different uh, responses that a plant might need to carry out. Um, and so it's the light that is, being, that is affecting where these hormones go. So if we put light all around the plant, as it is in a normal situation, light comes in from every possible angle, and we can see that the auxins, these chemical hormones that came from the tip that we were just talking about, are distributed down each side of the plant. Those hormones cause the cells to elongate, so they basically they get bigger and longer. Um, and as we know, if the cells are getting bigger and longer, so the whole plant is going to grow. There we go, there's our plant growing all around. Okay, so it grows straight up if the light is from above. However, if we have light coming in from one side, as we did in our experiment uh, in the box, we see a different response. So the root tip, or sorry, the, the, the shoot tip, where the hormone is produced from, which we either cut off or covered up, depending on which uh, pot we were talking about, we see behaves differently. So the side of the plant that is furthest away from the light is where the auxins go. Okay, so we might look at that another way and say that the light actually destroys any auxins and the hormones that are on the nearest side to the light. And therefore, cell elongation, i.e. growth, is only going to happen on this one side where the hormones have been found. And so as a result, these side elongate more than these side, causing it to bend towards the light. And there it is. Plants are also able to respond to gravity. As we know, this is called geotropism, or sometimes called gravitropism. And so again, just like with light, we need to know how they understand how to do this. So it's whether they can grow the right way up. Shoots always go up, roots always go down. We need to know how that can be controlled. Um, so just like we've um, shown you experiments to do with light, we can do similar experiments. Again, these could be given to you in an exam question where we are changing the plant's response to gravity, or at least measuring it. So, uh, this is a bean shoot, and what we can do is we can begin it, it to start to shoot, but then we can change its direction, which is lying, and hopefully therefore its response to gravity. So, auxins are produced from the growing tips, so in this case it's the tip of the root and the tip of the shoot, this is the bit with the flower and the leaf starting on it, so the auxins are delivered down toward, down the main stem of either the root or the shoot. And they grow, as you can see here, on the lower side. So 
But the same way that the light pushed the auxins to the, the shady side, here gravity is pushing the auxins onto the lowest side. Therefore, in a similar way, uh, we get cell elongation taking place. However, it's different depending on whether it's a shoot or whether it's a root. The shoot, the auxins cause cell elongation to take place where the auxin is present. So there's lots of hormone here in the blue. Cell elongation takes place causing the shoot to curve upwards towards the light, or towards gravity rather, that's what we're responding to. Whereas in the root, we're going to find the opposite. The cell elongation takes place where there is no hormone. So the upper part is where uh, the change takes place, so therefore it curves down with gravity. So that's how the plant's different parts are able to respond either positively or negatively with respect to gravity. So shoots, we've said, are negatively geotrophic, so they grow uh, up against gravity, whereas the shoot, the root, is positively geotrophic and therefore it will uh, go with gravity, and that's the reason we get the different responses to the hormone in each situation. Water is very similar, uh, roots obviously need to grow towards water, um, so that gives them a positive tropism, uh, and therefore we need to be able to respond, or the plant is going to respond accordingly. So we have looked at Tropisms to do with light, phototropisms, water, hydrotropisms, and uh, gravity, uh, geotropisms. And we've discussed that different parts of the plant are able to respond in different ways, and therefore they're either positively or negatively tropic to their given stimulus. And there's a summary of a few of those different types.